today we're going to look at this. It um, looks like Commodore 64, but it's not. It's um, it's basically an, the old VIC-20 case which I mentioned in one of my previous videos. Um, I think the C64 Maxi video, or the C64 video. And um, I kind of hinted that it would be nice to try and build one. Uh, so what I've done is I've got an old VIC-20 case. Uh, the machine was long dead, so I'm not taking apart a machine that is actually good and working. And um, I've added a few components. Originally, it was going to be based on a Pi Zero. But what I've found is, is that it's kind of messy. So these are some of my components for building this Commodore replica. Okay, so as you probably noticed, there's at the moment there's wires everywhere and um, I'm just basically test fitting a few bits and pieces just to see if it will all fit inside the case. And I've settled on this Leonardo board to provide the USB support for the Raspberry Pi which is what I'm actually going to use to make this Commodore work. And as you can see it's just a Raspberry Pi Zero in a clear case. Okay, so I've got the USB ports in position and um, it's roughly where I want to keep them for now. And I've got the little Raspberry Pi in the position I want so I can get hold of the SD card. And then I'm just tidying up the cables which will go through to the finish off putting on the header on the Leonardo board here. So you've got your keyboard cable from your VIC-20 coming in here and then you have your cable guide and your adapter which then goes through to this board here, your Leonardo board. Then it comes out through to your Raspberry Pi and then onto your USB ports which are here, okay, which are under this little piece of foam here to basically protect them. Okay, so um, they're all mounted and then there's foam on the top, foam on the bottom to give them a little bit of insulation so they don't vibrate or rattle around. Um, you have a USB hub here which then goes back into your Pi and then this cable which circles around goes to here which is the USB support for the keyboard and the Pi and the reason I've done it this way is because I want to be able to use this for other things as well as being basically a recreated Commodore machine and um, so I've made this USB port for the keyboard connector removable and external um, which means that if I want to use it as a standard keyboard or if I want to plug it into another machine for whatever reason then this Raspberry Pi doesn't have to be used and it can be used as a standard USB keyboard. So that's the concept. The only thing I haven't got is a, an extension cable for the HDMI port, which um, I will get later. And then that will come out, loop around, and I will probably bring it out the side of the machine, just there. But I may actually also, if there's room, take it out through the back so everything's nice and neat and then I can blank off the the normal Commodore ports which would be here for the cartridge etc and at the side where my fingers coming through for the power it doesn't give a powerful enough kind of emulation to run some of the more intensive software especially if you want to use it for a Commodore 128 it struggles a little bit um, and I did consider the orange Pi as well but I eventually settled on uh, a standard Raspberry Pi um, and the reason for that 
is because I wanted this just to do more than emulate a Commodore 64. I mean, it's not finished yet, this is part one, but the, the whole premise of this is I wanted it to emulate 64 and do it well, be able to run cartridge images, tape images and disc images. I also wanted to emulate the other Commodore machines, such as the VIC-20 um, and run cartridge images, uh, as well as tape images, um, a plus four. And also, I uh, would have kind of liked it to run the Commodore 128 and maybe a pet just to play around with. Uh, and the reason for the plus four is because I do have a plus four, and if you've seen some of my videos, it's it was a bit of a struggle getting it to run and to work properly and again I want to preserve that machine and it was the same for the Commodore 16 because they're getting a little bit long in the tooth now and um, keeping them working is kind of a good idea and working them off of HDMI TVs is always a bonus which you can't do readily on the old classic Commodore machines which you can if you emulate it. So that was the idea, that's the plan, this is part one, this is basically how the thought process went into it and uh, what I kind of ended up using. So we're going to have a, a quick look at it, okay? So you saw the original layout for this machine but it's changed again, I've made it a little bit more simpler and it's using an enclosed Pi there, plus the same board, which is down here, the Leonardo board, and um, everything else is very similar, but because it's got USB ports built in, and it doesn't need a USB port, and also it's a lot quicker, so let's get it back together and we'll have a good look. So when it's packed together, what you end up with is something that just looks like a normal desktop. The case is awful. Um, I'm going to do something with that. And um, you just have, I've got a headphone jack in here because I was using it. And rather than, you know, kind of having it through the TV speakers. But you've got HDMI power in. And that is basically it. But also... You can just use joy pads or joysticks, USB style ones, so any one you kind of want, and you just pop that into one of the USB ports at the side. So there are a couple of things I need to do to this to make it more user friendly, and the other one is to add a, a genuine on off switch on the side, which is what I'm going to do once I sort the USB hub out on the inside so I can use this keyboard for other things. So there you have it. You have a what looks like a a classic computer setup. There's no real difference. And the thing I like about this is that, you know, it doesn't look any real difference. It looks like a VIC-20. And if we run in VIC-20 mode, it will just be a VIC-20. And there we have it. A VIC-20 keyboard and case running VIC-20 operating systems and basic. So it's very genuine and the thing is with this machine I decided to use um, Vice because it seems to be the probably the most stable one for the Raspberry Pi and um, it did exactly what I wanted it to do it's not perfect by any means and it's something I need to play around with um, I want to change the menus on it eventually but this is a working system Doing a quick reboot and now we're putting it into um, Commodore Plus 4 mode. So again, we have the best of both worlds. And um, you've got a genuine, genuine keyboard. Which is um, really, really brilliant, to be honest. Because it's no longer do you have to kind of fiddle about on a standard uh, Windows keyboard to try and uh, figure out which graphics are on which keys if you want to do some programming and so on. So, you know, it does do the job really well. And the last one is PET, Commodore PET. So we're just booting up into a Commodore PET. So um, again, if you really want to try out a Commodore PET, you've got 
every single world possible on a modern LCD screen. It's one of the things that, you know, I was kind of intending on building anyway, but it's not complete. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the case and figure out what I'm going to do with the um, system itself, because I'd quite like to alter the, the way it looks and feels. At the end of the day, I think most of the time I'll be using it as a Commodore 64. So if I set it to all mode, to boot into that mode permanently, then um, I'll have a Commodore 64 for as much as I need it to until I want to use it for something else. And as you can see, this is just loading in a Flintstones game and it looks almost the same as what you would do on a standard Commodore 64. So it's running tape games. And this is it. It's off and running now. So as you can see, it's a lot quicker uh, because it's accelerated for cassette. It makes the experience a lot nicer for people who are not really into these. And, um, you know, they'd like to play the games, but they're not into waiting for 10 minutes or so for the game to boot up. So the um, Commodore sort of 64 um it runs it works it does what i needed to do and i guess the the video that you've just seen seems to make it look easy but the um, reason i built this is because i found a case and a keyboard and a lot of the components i already had which is the raspberry pis and things like that so basically they were available to me which is probably one of the biggest reasons why i decided to do it the Leonardo board, which is basically a clone of an Arduino style board, um, that again was bought as a, well, a part of a another keyboard and case, which was meant to be functioning or was functioning at some time. So I thought, okay, it's got to be easy enough to redo that. But it turns out that it was all corrupt. Um, so rather than kind of order another board, I thought, well, Let's just start again. Let's wipe it and start again. And uh, doing something like that takes time. And it is now nearly two o'clock in the morning. Um, I've been at it for quite a number of hours to get all of the keys working properly and get them mapped and get them to work. Now, it does work now, um, but it's a lot of effort. So these videos sometimes make it feel like it's as easy as anything to do but you know a lot of the times you know you only see what people kind of want you to see uh, so I'm not going to say this is easy the hardest part is getting the keyboard mappings correct and to make it actually work now if I was going to build another one of these I wouldn't be using this um, version of the Leonardo to produce a USB keyboard support for this machine. So the um, the way it maps the keys, the way it connects to the header is quite messy to me. So I'd be looking for something different, but it works and it works quite well and it's very stable. OK, so um, I'm not going to knock the little Leonardo board for that because for about 11 pounds or less in certain places you can get them for um, it's a good way of building one if you have the time to spend on it the other thing is is that it's not quite there yet because what i want to do is i want to add in another computer maybe um maybe another raspberry pi inside of it um and make it a bit more useful as in not just to emulate a Commodore, it's, I just want to use it as a, a machine that I might develop things on, um, programs on, software on, try out games and so on. Um, maybe write a few applications that we're going to do or going to need going forward. And also for to allow it to access the outside world. And I don't mean by an emulated modem or, you know, anything kind of like that. I mean, it's good, but I want to be able to access websites, you know, basically everything that you would do on a modern PC on this machine as well. So I want it switchable to be able to do both. So that's going forward is something I want to do. But um, 
you know, as a as a machine, it doesn't have to cost an awful lot to build a basic machine that can emulate a Commodore 64, Vic 20, Plus 4, PET, and so on. And it could also be very useful for having all of your games and anything else that you would normally use on the Commodore 64, all in one machine, all in one space. So um, it's a nice little project. There is a lot more to do on it. This is only part one. Um, part two, we're going to improve on it, um, get an SD card adapter so it can be swapped without opening the case and so on. Um, maybe make up some blanking plates and so on to tidy up the machine as well. Put in an extra four port hub. Um, maybe go down the route of adding a second um, Raspberry Pi or similar and then basically making it into a kind of a multi-use machine. So there's, there's the aim. But one of the questions I did say on one of my videos is, is it possible to make something better than the Commodore 64 Maxi or the C64 Maxi or the C64, depends on who you speak to. And I think that's a cracking piece of kit. It's a really good recreation of a Commodore 64. Um, at the moment it's kind of there or thereabouts. It will do exactly the same. It will actually do a lot more emulation for other machines. It will produce the same game, the same software, the same feel because it's actually a real Commodore VIC-20 case and a real Commodore VIC-20 keyboard. But it's not quite as tidy as I want it to be. So that's something I'm going to work on going forward. And um, we're just going to keep on improving this one. Part two, we're going to round it off. Um, maybe go down a different USB keyboard route, or rather a USB interface for the keyboard. Um, maybe not, because this one's stable. I, I'm kind of toying with the idea, but there's a lot more things we can do with it, okay? So it, um, hopefully it will inspire you to break out all of your bits and pieces if you were, you know, you collect these machines, all your dead bits of hardware, and try and do something with it. So. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you looked forward to the next part um, where we improve on this and um, hopefully add some more functionality to it, okay? So thanks for watching, I hope you subscribe and um, we'll see you a little bit later in the future. Thank you.